Holly moly crap. I'm extinct. about dinosaurs but I found the remnants of an old diskette. So I don't know about you but I've always been very interested in history and if I can put together history and photography I'm just going out to photograph dinosaur footprints with my large format camera. I knew that close to my house there was an old abandoned megalithic tomb. What I did not know and I just discovered recently was that close to it there were some dinosaur footprints. And it got me very curious to photograph it with my large 4x5 camera. This is a 3 millennia tomb completely destroyed by the locals that live here in these you know, social housings. This is like 5000 year old tomb that was vandalized, destroyed and blah blah blah. So I was trying this route but I cannot go through there because everything is wet and I'm going to slip and fall all the way down and the dinosaur footprint should be somewhere over there in that region. So I need to find a way around all this to get to that specific area that's a nice cliff though, over there. I don't know about dinosaurs, but I found the remnants of an old diskette. <laughs> this is old, but it's not that old. And it's empty. So I'm trying to find the footprints, I know that they should be somewhere around here, but I think that the vegetation already covered it. And it was right about now that I discovered that everything was covered by the vegetation, therefore I was unable to photograph it. One more failure, so let's go for another one. Adventure, I mean. Now the town close by is called Karenka, and there is this folklore around about uh, entity attacking people in this place, you know, at later hours of the night. But let me draw the things for you, because visually you have a better understanding. So the Karenka attacker is a matchstick man with no head. Or, well, maybe with a top hat. Or better yet, a head of a wolf. Yeah, it's, it's a head of a wolf, that's it, that's it. A beer belly, of course, I mean, any animal has a beer belly. He has some wolverine claws and at the end for some forsaken reason he has McDonald's shoes. Shit. Shit 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 shit. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it is onto me, he's onto me, he's onto me. And don't think of this as cowardly fleeing or, you know, running away from the fight. Uh, think of this as a tactical use of my legs to live and photograph another day. So I did fail miserably and I'm now going to a coffee shop. And I'm going to try um, Sushimoto image with this Ondu 4x5 pinhole camera. And let's see how it goes. So it's going to be inside a coffee shop for at least five or six minutes. But hey, I didn't get too comfortable because no rest for the wicked or, well, no rest for the photographers. And it was time to go and search for those dinosaurs. So I was scouting around for a place to shoot. Uh, I mean, 
going after the dinosaur footprints when all of a sudden I notice this nice lovely house and I'm just waiting for the sun to come up behind the hill so I can do an image of it. The thing with this house is that I was inside of it already with my Nikon F about 10 minutes ago and there's somebody living in it. Anyway, I'm going to take advantage of the weather and I'm going to shoot it with a Petzval lens just to take advantage of the low luminosity. Ah, uh, large format cameras and wilderness. Ah well, w wilderness between brackets. <clears throat> Well, I'm just dandy glad that the squatter didn't came out to mug me. For this specific shot, I'm using a Petzval lens coming from a magical lantern. This is the one that inside had the markings of 1857, so that's how I know the date. It's a 210 millimeters. I have another one inside my bag of 180, and I have another one of 150. But this one, this one is quite all right. This one will do the trick. And let's see how it turns out. Let's put the film and we'll see how it turns out to be. Overall it came out fine. I did two images, uh, this first being one of them. And the second one has of a more cartoon-esque look to it because I did several movements. But I guess it was time to quit these back roads and go for what's actually the gist of this video the dinosaurs. I'm trying to locate the dinosaur footprints but as you can see from the wind this is really not an easy place to do large format because there is a lot of wind and the camera would wobble a lot. I think it might be very close. Oh yeah here it is. Just for comparison and with buzzing ears from the wind and with another more failure at hand I moved to plan B, which was also condemned to fail because when I took the camera out it started to drizzle and water and bellows of a large camera, they don't go together. And eventually on plan C I was able to find the footprint that I wanted, all I needed was to add water for having an added contrast. And it's now that what photographers call the dance of large format starts, which is, you know, preparing the camera and doing all, all, all the steps until the final image is taken, which by the way, this originated two images that I'm actually fond of. And by now it was time to head back home and try a new way of developing film, this time with a tank in a horizontal position. And here are the four images side by side of this small little adventure. And that's it, this does conclude the video for this week, I hope you enjoyed seeing it as much as I enjoyed doing it. And I'll see you next time. Please do hit the like and subscribe button as this will keep this channel alive and going. Next time I will be using this lens. This is the mythical lens, the 105 2.5 from Nikkor. A beautiful little lens. Uh, she is very well known. She's very famous for being used by Don McCullen producing this image right here and now we'll be testing it out and giving you images produced with this lens the mythical 105 f 2.5 many thanks i will see you next time and as we say in portuguese até a próxima